Okay, so in this video we're going to demonstrate how to build out a, a Lexbot that allow us to do conversations um, that allow us to, in this case, do a booking for either a hotel or a car, uh, demonstrate, kind of walk you through that process. And we will also hook it up to a Lambda function that we can use to hook into other AWS services. All right, so I'm gonna be utilizing the Learn Lab uh, environment from Amazon Academy, AWS Academy, I should say. So what we're doing here is go ahead and if you haven't already done so, go ahead and start your lab. Um, and once the lab is started, you should see a little green AWS button here. So go ahead and click that. That should log us into the console um, in our sandbox environment. And you can go ahead and click Amazon Lex. All right, so the first thing we do here is we're going to create the, the sample bot. We're going to use one of the existing blueprints to get us started. Uh, we're also going to make sure we're using version one of the console, uh, just because a lot of the a lot of the demonstrations that are out there and, and tutorials use version one. So uh, we'll go ahead and switch that to that. There you go. So we got that now. Let's go ahead and clear that and go ahead and create our bot. We're going to use the custom bot and just kind of give you some demonstration of, of how it works. You've got this. These bots have intents and utterances or just phrases that come out and slots or, or data that the user would have to put in um, and prompts and such. Um, utterances are things that the user will say back to you. So they're spoken phrases that you can then use to know which, which intent to uh, go off and start um, working through. Um, so then at the very end of this, once you have everything, you'll have a fulfillment. So we're going to go ahead and create the sample here. We're, we're going to use the Book Trips Blueprint. Go ahead and create the same name. Uh, we'll leave it as English as our, our main language, so we don't have to select anything there. Um, make sure we pick this one for the COPA requirement is no. And go ahead and click Create. And here's our sample intents. We've got one for booking a car, one for booking a hotel. You can see sample utterances that the user can say in order to get us into this intent. So if the user says, I want to make a car reservation, or reserve a car, or book a car, then that, that will allow us to know which intent they're trying to go through. And then we can go through and, and put the data here. These slots are the individual data elements that we want to capture from the user. And we can do some other things, and we'll do this later on. We'll actually hook this up to a, to a Lambda function. But for right now, we're just going to return the parameters back to the, to the client. So uh, you can kind of see here, it's actually running through this build. Um, sometimes it'll take a minute or two to actually build, uh, build what it needs to behind the scenes uh, for this bot to be active. Uh, once that's successful, we can go ahead and try it out. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, actually I'm gonna go down the book hotel one here. So I'm gonna say, I want to book uh, a hotel, all right? And it knew, now even though it wasn't an exact utterance, I said something similar. I didn't say I want to book a mega hotel reservation, I said something similar. So that's the power of Lex, it'll, it'll interpret what you're saying and try to figure out from what you're saying what you actually, the closest match to it. Okay, so it knew I wanted to, to it figured out that I wanted to book a hotel just based on kind of what I said here. So I'm going to go ahead and say my city, I'm going to say Chicago. And I'm going to check in now. This is the other thing. You can type in the 15th as your check-in date, or I can give it August 15th, 15th, 15th. Any of these phrases will work. I can even say, oh, 8, 15, right? That will also work. It's smart enough to interpret what I'm putting in there. Uh, again, this goes back to knowing the, the what, I, since I picked Amazon date, it knows kind of which which kind of data element it is. And then from that, I can look at what I put into it to determine which is the most appropriate thing that I'm really asking for. All right, and there's a prompt that I'm gonna get. So here's my data elements. There's a prompt that I'm gonna get. Uh, so I'm on this one here. How many nights do you want to stay in? I'll say five nights. And it asks me the room type, which in this case happens to be a selection of queen, king, or deluxe. So I'm gonna say king. All right, then I got a confirmation here. It lets me know kind of confirms everything that I've just put in there. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. And then it's gonna go through and build out that intent and pass all that data. Now, since I had selected that I want the fulfillment to go just return it back to the client, 
this is the end of it, right? It didn't go anywhere. We didn't hook into any of the services from AWS. Uh, in order to do things like that, that's where Lambda comes into play. Which we'll do next is kind of hook this into Lambda so then we can open this up to do things like store the data in a DynamoDB database or perhaps send SNS messages um, or SQS if we want to do some kind of message queuing and so forth for fulfillment. Those kind of things all are leveraged through Lambda. And we'll do that next. We'll actually hook this into a Lambda function to support that. Let's do that next. All right, so now what we're going to do here to hook up Lambda is we're going to go over to services and go to the Lambda option or search for it in the list of services above. Uh, I'm going to go into create a function. And for here, I'm, since, I'm going to use a blueprint because for the existing Lexbot that we just created, there's actually a corresponding uh, blueprint or kind of a, a script or template that's already been set up that works with that uh, to this tutorial that we're going through. So I'm going to select the Lexbot trip Python option here and click configure. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and give this my booking function. All right, and I'm going to go select an existing role here. So the role that you select here is important because this is, determines which uh, which permissions that we need to grant in order for this function uh, to work properly. Um, for in our case, since we're using the lab environment, we're just going to select the, select the lab role one. But uh, you may end up creating your own role in the real world just so that you can set up the permissions correctly. But lab role, since this is a sandbox environment, is sufficient for our purposes. All right, um, go ahead down here. You can kind of see here's the code that goes with it that, that we get as part of this blueprint. So we'll go ahead and create that function. All right, uh, we'll come over here and look at it. Here's all the code. There's quite a, quite a bit in here. Uh, we'll touch on some of this as we go through this. Um, but you can see that this is how we can have code hooked up behind the scenes uh, of the Lex functions or Lexbot that we created. Uh, for example, validations. We're going to be able to validate cities. There's only certain cities that are supported, so we can validate the, the cities. Um, you can do other types of validations, obviously. But uh, so this is a lot. There's a lot in here. But but for the most part, you know, for we're going to go ahead and just kind of select the default here, and uh, we'll just go with uh, go with that. First thing you want to do is go ahead and let's test it. All right. And when you test something in Lambda, it, it, you know you have to give it uh, an existing. Um, if to give it some some test data, so they've already pre-loaded some test data for this function expects, but we'll go ahead and click create. Well, test one, and uh, we'll go ahead and test it, and we can kind of see the response here that we got with it. Uh, let's go ahead and click it this way. It's actually a better way to do it. Let's click it this way. There we go, we got a green box here. We can actually see the details of the test that we just created. We can actually go over and monitor it. So if you click on monitor, it'll show you the CloudWatch metrics. So this is kind of how you can monitor what your Lambda function is doing, how it's performing, how many times it's been invoked, and so forth. Uh, another good thing here is the logs themselves you can view in CloudWatch. So if you click on that, um, anything that the functions report out will be logged to the log streams. And you can kind of see this is the this was what was recorded whenever I tested my event just now. So I hit it a couple of times and you can kind of see it started request and ended it. So this is a way this is how you can kind of look and see how your function is performing. Uh, if you if you have to do kind of debugging to fix issues, you're gonna to want to remember, right? So what you do is you want to get it through the monitor, click the new logs and cloud watch, which will take you into the log events for your Lambda function uh, to do debugging. All right, but the but the Lambda function itself is ready to go. Uh, here we got a green green box here. If this was red or yellow, uh, we'd have to check and see if it did if it fails for whatever reason. This will be I believe red, so um, we would fix that. But this all looks good. So this function is ready to go. We, we can now go back into Lambda. We we'll go back into Lex and back into our book a trip bot we just created and we're going to go ahead and edit both of our intents and we're going to select the lambda function we just created booking function 
and it's telling us we're going to get permissions to, for Lex to invoke our Lambda functions, which is what we want. Um, and then again, with, with Lambda, you can have different versions. So we can have a test version or version one, version two. Uh, but we, we're going to default to the latest version. And then down here, we do the same thing. We're going to put the new function. So this single Lambda function, if you will, will serve two purposes for us. It will do data validation as we're going through the conversation, and it will also use it later on for, for, for fulfillment. Okay, so that's kind of what's happening here is that up at the top here, we've said we want to do validation and any other kinds of things we want to we'll hook into uh, while we're going through the conversations. And then once we've got everything from the user, once we've got all the, all the data from our different prompts or our slots, we can then do the fulfillment. This is where you would hook in other things you want to do after the fact, right? So let's say we want to save this intent to uh, a, a DynamoDB data table, right? This is the function that we're going to do that. And I'll show you in a little bit how where that function actually is and how we get to it. But, all right, everything else looks good here. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Uh, and then I'm going to go over to the Book Hotel one. And I'm going to edit that one the same way. We're simply using the same function and the same permissions. Uh, but we're going to use the same booking function that will be used for both booking cars and booking hotels. We're going to use it for both data validation as well as fulfillment on all those. And again, you can decide how you want to carve up your Lambda function. You can have different functions that, that, that are unique for only individual things, uh, or you, know, you can have one like we have here that serves multiple purposes. All right, let's go ahead and uh, save it. All right, now we've got to go ahead and build it. And we'll go ahead and let that thing uh, get built. It might take a minute or two for that to get built. And let's go ahead, once that's done, we'll be able to test out and see if uh, our Lambda functions are getting, getting called correctly. All right. One thing we can use to prove that is, um, if you recall, um, there were only certain cities that were supported for booking a hotel, right? So um, we'll try to do a city that doesn't exist in the list here and see how that works for us. Well, let's go ahead and let that thing build, and then once it's ready to go, we'll continue on. All right, the book was built successfully, so let's go ahead and test out our conversation. Want to book a hotel. All right, and I'm going to put Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh um, is not one that was not one of the cities that was in our list uh, in, in, our Lambda, in our Lambda function, if you recall. Uh, so we know right here that this is working correctly um, because, uh, let's go back here and, all right. Go back to our thinking function, we'll kind of see here what I'm talking about. So if I go to Lambda function, scroll down just a little bit. I will get to the point. There's my valid cities in New York, Los Angeles. So these are the only cities that we currently support right now uh, for this one. If I wanted to support Pittsburgh, then I would go ahead and I can add that in this collection of, of cities. But Pittsburgh's not there. So I know my validation is obviously hitting, hitting this function. Uh, so let's go back to our code here. And uh, this time I'll put it in Chicago. All right. Uh, I'll say the 15th, and when it's, I'll say four nights, and I want um, double. Again, double is not recognized room type. All right, so looks like that validation is working as well. Uh, so I'll type in queen this time. That looks good. There's my confirmation of all the data that I just passed in there. Um, and if that's going to want to go ahead and book it, I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Thanks, and it booked the reservation. All right. So, if you recall, when we were doing the when we were doing it the first way, first way, we were actually just got some intent information. It was actually kind of more programish. Here, I got a nice message that came back. All right. So my function obviously is being executed. So let's go back over to Lambda and kind of see how that's working. So let's go over here to Monitor, and we're going to click uh, View and Cloud Watch. And you can see a lot more, a lot more data in here now. 
that we have, but right at the very bottom here, I've got some debug messages that are, that are coming out. And my reservation type that I sent in there. Um, what I have, there's the bot name that was created. So here's all the information I entered in. Room type, Chicago, location, the data I checked in. So this is all my data. And it says booked hotel under and it gave me all the data. So this is a debug message that came from my Lambda function. So if I go back into my Lambda function, I'll show you exactly where that code is. Go here to code and scroll down to, we're gonna look for the dispatch message method, which is way at the bottom here. Now again, this is all Python. You can obviously do this in other languages, but the but the blueprint uh, supports Python to start. So that's the version that I chose. Um, but obviously, you could do this with Node or one of the other languages that's supported by Lambda. Let's scroll all the way down. This is the call that had. This is the, the the method that gets called whenever we're done and we want to dispatch the message. So here's that logging debug log message that it passed in there. Here's my intent name. Here's my data that came in. So if the request itself all comes in uh, through uh, using JSON format. Uh, so all that Lambda function logic itself. Uh, let me go back here to where this is at. You can kind of see Right, so this is the data that is getting passed around. It's all JSON data that's been getting back, getting passed back and forth, right? So this is what's going to come into your function. So this intent request is all the data, and I can I can interrogate any of the data that comes in. The current intent and the name is my intent name. Um, and then down here, intent name, if it's book hotel or book car, then I, I will go into either the book hotel method or the book car method. So I did a hotel. So this is where it got called. But if I go into scroll up a little bit, I should see all of the logic for booking a hotel. And it starts right here. So here's all the data. So it, it basically went in there and I pulled out all my data by location, check in date, the night, the room type, session attributes, and so forth. And here is my confirmation, all the data that I just, uh, that you saw on the screen. Now, this is where we would then take this data and store it into a database or call it SNS or store it, send it out as a message queue message, right? This is essentially where you hook into actually to, to hook into other services. So this is what you would have to customize is this, is this area of, of the code. Um, for our purposes, all we're simply doing is logging it, right? So you saw that message in the log, book hotel under, and then it just took all the reservation data and stored it out as a log message. But right in here is where you would do the logic to actually store this to a Lambda. I'm sorry, store this to a DynamoDB or some other relational database or send it as a message to message or so forth. It goes through there. So that's kind of how Lambda gets plugged into this. And then the next step after this would be to... Uh, take this and store it to a DynamoDB. And that wraps up the demo for the, for this one. I, I plan on having future ones as well that, that go through more details of this. Uh, as But this is a starting point for how you hook up Lambda and a Lex function to generate a, a conversational chatbot. Thanks for listening.